we've got to talk about BS High. BS High, Doc on HBO. And I saw this poster come up. I said, oh, okay, cool. More, you know, kind of football programming from HBO. They do uh, hard knocks, all this stuff. Like, they're always entertaining. I get to it when I get to it. Even as somebody that's not much of a football fan, I'll always turn on a hard knocks or a sports movie or a sports doc or whatever. They're always entertaining. And then I see this sign, right? I say, well, what is BS high, by the way? What is what is BS high? Is that a, And it says right here, Bishop Sycamore. I go, where do I know Bishop Sycamore from? Where do I, I know Bishop Sycamore. Hot dog, do you remember where we would know Bishop Sycamore from? Uh, something that happened maybe a couple years ago <laughs> that was probably in the news for two seconds. You remember? Do you remember? I remember. I remember. <laughs> it was <laughs> the high school football team that got so totally piece by piece blown out live on ESPN that the cyber sleuth started going crazy. And if you remember, right, you, you, you're just watching the most one-sided high school football game that you've ever seen in your life to the point where it's dangerous. By the second half, the commentators are all acknowledging that this isn't a game that should be taking place. It's not a game that should be on TV. And while the game is on, the cyber sleuths start going nuts. And they realize, in my mind's eye, before the game was even over, word got out that Bishop Sycamore is not a high school. <laughs> and this thing that we're watching, uh, these these they have no, it's not a real high school football team. That's why... They were so unskilled that not only was it not a real high school football team, there was no high school called Bishop Sycamore. Some of the high school kids on the field were like 20, 21 years old, like, <laughs> and they were still just getting destroyed. And like you just said a minute ago, Hot Dog, I had totally forgotten about this whole story until I started watching this doc, and it all came flooding back to me. And this was one of those stories that you you just sat there going, how could this have possibly happened? I can't wait until somebody does a doc about this because it is so confusing and convoluted. And along comes Max to say, we heard you loud and clear. And not only did they give us a doc, I, I feel like for a doc to really hit that sweet spot, number one, the topic has to be great. Something like you said, Hot Dog, that has been in the cultural zeitgeist that maybe came and went, but fascinated all of us for a, a small period of time. But the second step that a lot of docs forget, you need an all-time character. Like, the reason you could do two Firefest docs is because Hulu got Billy McFarland and Netflix got the blow you for a bottle of water guy, right? Those are your two, you need those characters in order for this to work. And boy, does BS High have one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to the one and the only uh, Roy Johnson. Roy Johnson, who is the brain behind Bishop Sycamore. This is the guy that put the team together. This is the guy who created the school that didn't exist. This is the guy who was also the head coach without a ton of football experience uh there's footage of him on the sidelines with a headset on while this game is on and these poor kids are getting kids at acls men, men. <laughs> <laughs> these poor men acls were getting blown out you're watching it's acls get blown out at a on a high school football game so uh this and as bizarre as the sort of elevator pitch one line of this story is, the further you get into it, the more absolutely nuts it is. Like this guy, Roy, they just, I mean, they shot him the whole time and they left so much of it in this doc. Like there are so many moments where in this gentleman's head, he's like, okay, we're just having a conversation now. We haven't really started shooting yet. And it's like, oh no, this is all. Final cut. This is all yeah, sure. making Keep going. It. Keep going. I mean, within the first minute of the thing, they, they film him walking into the room. They film him sitting down. See this, like, highly stylized doc background? 
They mm -hmm. show the whole set around it. They show, like, they take all the mystique out of it because they get this guy talking to the director, going like, tell me how you want me to sit because I've been studying uh, body language. I'm a body language expert now. So do you want me to sit like this? Do you want me to sit like this? Do you want me to sit like this? Already, I mean, these are the traits, generally speaking, of a liar. <laughs> like, if somebody's trying to figure out what to do with their hands to give you a certain perception, odds are they're not telling you the truth. <laughs> as soon as they uh, he sits down and says that, how do you want me to sit? The producer in the back has got to be like, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We he's, got, just, he's just, we got something. Yeah, yeah. He's like, here we go. And then he goes like this. Roy goes like this. I mean, tell me, he goes, how do I look? Do I look cool? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, dude, you look fucking awesome. And he's like, do I look like a con artist? That's what he said. He goes, do I look like a con artist? And they go, you look great. And he goes, no, no, no. I asked a specific question. Do I look like a con artist? And it's like, what, what, what are we dealing with here? Didn't we have a, didn't we have dinner with the producer for this? I, uh, yes, I didn't know it was him. Yeah. I, here's, here's the thing. And he's going to come in and do an interview about this thing because I'm so fascinated yes, by it. Yeah, of course yes. we got him. I messaged him yeah. right away because at one point, Roy walks off the set because, you know, here's one of the great, and I think, I want to say that Michael Jordan, The Last Dance, was the real documentary to popularize this. But recording interviews, putting them on an iPad, and giving it to the person that they're talking about for it the reaction. They did, right? It's one of the yeah. great things that you can do in a documentary now. Because, you know, they go to the kids slash men, sorry, that were on the team. And they're all talking about how this guy just totally screwed up their lives, just like destroyed their lives. Because not only was this not a college, so there's no way that it was leading to anything. But also, even if they wanted to go to a real college after, colleges were like, Oh, you're involved in that weird Bishop Sycamore stuff? Yeah, we don't we don't want you anywhere near our school. No. So, like, all these kids have stories of having their lives destroyed. There's, you know, evidence throughout the doc that they imply that he took out PPP loans during the uh, pandemic in the kids' names. No. Which no. they never oh. flat out say it. Right, because they're smart, which is why we're not flat out saying that it's true. All I'm telling you is what I saw in this doc. But they go like, you, there's PPP loans in all these kids' names. And then they ask the kids, did you dig out a PPP loan for 20 grand? And then he's like, no, I never, no, I never took out a PPP loan. And they're like, yeah, well, guess what, bro? There's a record of everybody who took out PPP loans and you're you're on the list, so is your teammate, so is his teammate. So, so. Man, they were handing those things out like, like anything. Oh, they were easy. We should have, we should have taken one. I mean, we got a small business. It's very small. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> margins are slim. I got now. I got to check to see if I have any under my name. Son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I was taking out a ton of them under your name. <laughs> Don't worry, it's for your future. Okay. So, so like, uh, you know, he was he was like getting hotel rooms but not paying the bills, but you can't kick somebody out of a hotel except like because of squatters rights, like they get like three months before they got to pay or something like that. So he was getting like extended stay hotel rooms and then not paying the bill. And then they'd go, well, you're, we're evicting you now. And then he'd go and he'd tell the people on the team, all right, that, well, that's the end of the season. So we, we're all going to leave now. You know, we're just moving out. And like the, lady at the front desk would be like, you're not moving out. You're getting evicted. <laughs> like that's, but the kids didn't know. And also the rooms were in their names. So the evictions were in, were in their e name. So, you know, he's going through all this stuff, right? And he's, uh, he's, he's, he's watching video of all these kids being like, yeah, that guy sucks. He screwed up our life. He did this, he did that. And he ends up storming off the set. He's like, I got to take a break. I got to go. And he's walking off the set. And he's like, this is bullshit. This is nonsense. I was, did he, was he still mic'd up? Of course he was still mic'd up. <laughs> <laughs> you know he was still mic'd up. And then <laughs> that dude who we had dinner with at WrestleMania walked out in some Dior shorts chasing him out going like, no, 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 fam. Come back. Come back. No, 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 nice. no, 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 no. It was great. 
It was perfect. But basically the story is that this dude, he uh, he was working with a church and they were like, we want to get uh, underprivileged kids ready for college. Like who, for whatever reason, maybe they got thrown out of high school, maybe whatever. Like they just need, they, they don't have the grades, whatever it is. We want to get like a continuance school, I guess, and have it attached to the church. And this dude is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all for that. I'll volunteer to spearhead it. And he's like, but we're going to need a football team. And the dude's like, the dude who's doing it with him is like, wow, well, I mean, yeah, maybe in like two, three years. Like, for, let's get a school and then we'll do a football team after the school. And he like comes up with this plan to build a whole $150 million athletic facility. But it's like they have no money and no property and no nothing. So they're like, the I don't. guy's like, why are you so fixated on this? What do you keep talking about thing? a football team? Like, we're just trying to get a school. <laughs> and then the guy goes, and then I showed up. And just one day he had a busload of kids going to an athletic spot going like, this is our football team. And it's like, but it's not. So eventually the church, the, the one guy who's with him goes like, well, I'm out. Like, I'm not part of this operation anymore because you just keep trying to build a football team. And then the church goes, yeah, whatever that guy's doing is not affiliated with us whatsoever. And then he goes, okay. And he just changes the name of the organization to Bishop Sycamore. And he goes, well, I'm starting this high school without you. Priority number one, football team. And like all the, <laughs> all the players are like, yeah, we all thought it was weird that there were no classes. But also we didn't want to call home and tell our parents that we had no classes. So we just kind of chilled, you know, we, we just... We just did our thing. And he ends up, and it, it does drive me a little crazy, you know, because like people like this who do, what is the impossible, right? Like, how do you get a fake high school football team on ESPN? And they, and, and he could you, go, could you do that? I couldn't do that. Well, you know why? Cause you're not willing to just constantly lie. <laughs> I think someone would still call me out on my bullshit. You got to be a really good liar. That's true. Well, yeah, that's true. I, but you, because because hot dog, because you are like cognizant of the fact that you shouldn't be lying. That's what makes mm. liars easy to spot because they don't want to lie, right? right? If somebody's a really good liar, it just means that they're like empty, right? Like there, there's there's nothing inside that is telling them this is a bad idea. They're just like they're sociopathic. They don't care. And so he's like, I mean, look, in the first year, our team was traveling. We travel all the way to Texas. I got these kids on a plane. Who can do that? And I'm going like, you can't just pat yourself on the back for just lying all the time. Just constantly lying to everyone about everything around you. These are not accomplishments. Well, I mean, unless you believe in the, the uh, you know, what's that saying? The ends and the means and all that stuff. <laughs> the ends it's, justifying the means that you're, you're. If you believe in that. Fake it till you make it. A, it's impressive. Then you got a bunch of <laughs> and men. It, it does speak more to the system, right? The fact that like there's, you shouldn't be able to make fake high schools just to have football teams, right? Like, like there's, mm -hmm. but there's such an emphasis on finding people for the NFL and the business around finding professional athletes is so big that you can get away with anything. So it's not like this all rests on this lunatic shoulders, right? He was, he found this place where he was able to prosper the world of high school football. So he's like, uh, 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 going through everything. And he ends up with his team, Bishop Sycamore, uh, playing IMG Academy. Do you know what IMG Academy is, Hot Dog? Never heard of it. It's a it's it's the top tier high school football program. Like it takes the top 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 level high school athletes and goes come to our school. It is a real school, but we're going to be fully concentrating you on getting you ready for the NFL. And they're just like, they're a factory. They make professional football players. It's what they do. This was the team that he put his team against. Because he was like, even if they look fine, like they don't have to win. All they have to do is play reasonably. And it'll be great on tape. It'll, it, and it'll be awesome. But they couldn't play reasonably. 
because they weren't a real team. <laughs> like it's all this like, but I don't understand every 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 step of this operation was like, what is step two? They're like, no, step three is profit. I know step three is profit. What is step two? And he's like, what don't are you worry about it? What are you talking about? Step one, you find the football team. Step three is profit. What do you what? And I'm going, yeah, I know. What's step two? Maybe he, uh, <clears throat> maybe he kind of uh, figured that a bunch of uh, older men, like 2021, 20, would be able to reasonably <laughs> compete against 16, 17, 15 year olds. Right, right. Like he was thinking, like, hey, look, just the age difference alone. I mean, it's grown ass men playing, even the best high school football players. These are grown ass men, but you don't understand when you say the best high school football players, these are kids that are like getting ready for the NFL in one year less. They're going to be the top college football players. Right. Which he's going to taking it down a notch to like maybe facing middle schoolers, middle like schoolers. the top middle schoolers. Yes. You probably, yes, you might lose still, but you might, <laughs> you're not going to get you wrecked. Might. Yes. Right? You'll probably lose. You'll pro cause again, it's not a real football team. You'll probably lose, but you won't get absolutely wrecked. Yeah, I mean, dude, I don't want to spoil everything about this doc, but you, you, this is, this is it. This guy's a cultural icon. This, this guy is this, this guy, Roy Johnson, is everything. And then I think to myself, right, as I'm watching, I go like, he knows. There's no spinning this in a positive way. At one point in the doc, he does claim that he's still winning because he's on HBO right now. You're like, I mean, yeah, but I mean, you know, that's like, that's like saying uh, the Iceman, you know, the serial killer. Technically he won because he's on HBO. It's like, no, you're on HBO because they're talking about you being a serial killer. You're still in jail for being a serial killer. Like, I don't, of course he didn't have to go to jail. But this, but this guy's not in jail. So. No, not at all. Not at all. He's walking the streets free and clear. And I think wants to just continue doing fake high school football. He's just like, maybe I just, it isn't. I'll just do that again. Why not? Maybe it is a W for him. I mean, he's got no he's got notoriety that he didn't have before, and he's still a free man. I would trust him. <laughs> 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 I mean, he seems cool to me. I mean, now, but now, like every, but it, so like, this is this is what this is what I struggle with though, as I'm watching these sometimes, and then I figured it out watching him. Right? I go, why would he do this? Like. When you know there's no positive thing about this, like everybody involved, including these young people who had a dream that you said you could make come true, even though you could not make that dream come true. Everybody involved looks horrible for this and you look the worst of all. Why would you agree to do this documentary? But then you watch and you realize that that's, that's what it is. You just, they just want to be able to go somewhere and talk about themselves. Like from the very beginning, he's like, you know, there's a legend, Roy Johnson. He's kind of a legend. He's talking about himself in the third person. He's going, there's a lot of legend about Roy Johnson. And I'm sitting there watching this going, no, there is, what are you talking about? Nobody's thinking about you the way you're thinking about you. And he goes, you know, Father, son, husband, what? and I'm like, do you? I I have no idea if he's got a family or not. But he goes, but the reality is, I see myself as Hannibal from the A team. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking? The captain of the A team. Well, well, it's either this or he wouldn't be talked about at all. He would be just like a a, a nobody, you know, just living his life. And that's so, the, so that's he's his, got the clout. That's his justification. That's the justification. I'd rather be infamous than a nobody. And and you're like, okay, I mean, I can't, I'd, I'd so far, so much prefer to be an absolute nobody than somebody that for the next like two weeks, everybody's gonna be like, did you see that absolute maniac on HBO? And then forget about it anyway, right? And he's like, that's me, that was me. That was me. Hey, you see that HBO doc? Remember that guy that looked absolutely terrible in that documentary? That was me. Remember with the crazy eyes? Like he, he was having manic episodes while they were interviewing him. At one point he looks at the camera and he goes, he goes, 
And he's like shaking and his eyes are getting big. Cause it's almost like when he gets pinned into a corner, he just starts like trying to manifest positivity, right? And and just mm -hmm. uh, like, if I just keep talking, everything will be fine. Which does, cause they go like, uh, they go, how many lawsuits do you have against you? And he, and he goes, how many did you find? <laughs> and they go, well, how many do you have? And he goes, well, how many did you find? And they go, well, we found a few. And he goes, well, yeah, I mean, I have a few. And they go, we found 30. And he goes, 30? <laughs> I mean, this guy, is he's, he had a domestic violence charge against him, 30 lawsuits from people filing against him because he keeps skipping out on bills. It's, it's nuts. But he goes, uh, as like all this is coming down on him in the middle of the interview, he starts going, uh, he goes, because you know what? After talking to you guys, I can feel the, traje the trajectory of my life is going to change significantly. And the director is just going, he goes, for the better or for the worse? For the better. <laughs> and it's just like, all right. Okay. If he doesn't go to jail and if he avoids going to jail. I don't think him, there's any charges. Of like, I, I don't think we're waiting for a shoe to drop here. I mean, PPP loans, That I don't think you could do that. They're not in his name. Take yeah, I, I know. I don't <laughs> think you could do that. <laughs> he didn't do it. And he, they said, did you take out those PPP loans? He goes, no. <laughs> okay. Stay <laughs> closed. You know, he goes, no. No. There's one part, like, the guy that he started the school with, they go, he, I mean, it's like, it's the same liar that you knew in fifth grade. They go, like, they mention the guy's name, like, whatever it is. Harold Ford Jr., whatever the guy's name is. And he goes, who's who's that? What? Who's that? What? And then he goes like this, who's Harold? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I guess I did start with him. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. And like, the then they, the guy that they're asking him about, they're talking to him and he's like, yeah, of course. Yeah, we worked together on this whole, like we built this whole <laughs> thing. Like, of course he's gonna pretend he doesn't know who I am. Like, yes. But yeah, they go, like, did you take out PPP loans in these kids' names? And he goes, what? No. No, absolutely not. So, you know, I don't think he, so I guess he didn't. He says he did It reminds didn't. me of, like, a unhinged Stokely Hathaway, in a way. It's almost like who the character is based on. <laughs> yeah, like how it he's would, always scheming and trying to do something. It would be great if he just, Stokes just turned into, like, just a liar. Just like he just lied. Yeah. <laughs> Like, we know that's not true. And he goes, how do you know? How do you know that that's not true? And just like, the eyes are getting bigger and bigger. Okay, all right, maybe it's true. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, he, he just wanted to, he wanted to be a GM of a football team. That's all. I I think he has not, obviously, obviously he hasn't learned his lesson. <laughs> no. Of, you know, lie. But here's I, here's I don't the lesson he that has... he's learned. Good things happen to good people. Yeah. <laughs> but also in a way, like this HBO doc is reward, uh, rewarding him. It is. Yeah. It is. And, and there's going to be a lot more docs to come because now we always have some social fucking thing happening that everyone's talking about. And you know, behind the scenes, there's at least, 10 documentaries that are cooking right now oh, based yeah. on whatever the flavor of the week was. And I can't wait for all of them. Every single <laughs> one. They're so good. There's going to be another one next month that we'll we'll remember and be like, oh, it's good. Yeah. It's, I remember that. It's going to be the best. I can't wait.